<laughs> but let's get into the news. Let's, it's like let's... a drunk version of binary. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we get three. Uh, so the first bit of news is that Steve Orlando and Ivan Reese um, are assembling a new Justice League of America lineup. And this is a New York City Comic Con uh, thing, which I thought that didn't that wasn't until this weekend. But yeah, Comics this Alliance... is sort of the precursor going into it is that we'll see the official announcement those days. Um, but we're getting some of the leaks ahead of time. It's kind of like how we know all the specs for the Pixel phones that are being announced tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's another thing. One of my uh, coworkers really excited for that, and I'm like, "Yeah, dude, that's actually awesome." Like, because that means there's going to be well, one, they're not calling it the Nexus anymore. Like, I'd like the name Nexus, but it all just seems like confusing. Like, oh, you got a Nexus phone? Yeah, which one do you got? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at the chat, and it's it distracted me a little bit because Brandon's upset you didn't say hi to him, Corey. And then yeah, he Ashley goes, you got a yo. <laughs> but anyways, the uh, and I will say hi to everyone. Uh, so the, they've announced a few of their people. I don't think they've announced the this isn't the full lineup. But the first person is the Ray. Um, now, in, his real name is Ray Terrell. I know nothing of him. All right, so what I remember of the Ray is way, way back in the 90s, there was the reintroduction of the character, the Ray. Now, the Ray had started out as part of the Freedom Fighters, uh, going back to the Uncle Sam stuff. Okay, real quick, though, this this is a DC, Ben DC, whole time not brought in from Milestone or brought in from... Not brought in from Milestone or Vertigo or anything like that. The Ray was always a superhero character. I don't remember the Freedom Fighters were actually from a different company that got acquired, kind of like uh, the Fossa Comics uh, for Captain Marvel and some other things got acquired by DC, where all the Charleston characters became what was essentially the basis for the Watchmen, but Blue Beetle and uh, Peacemaker, Captain Atom, all of those were from other companies that got acquired. I don't remember if the Ray is something similar to that, but... There was a character that was a modern version of the Ray that came out during Zero Hour in the 90s. Uh, So he was a younger character that was kind of an update to a a golden age uh, to being a modern age version. I don't know if this is the same character or not. I can't remember the Ray's real name. It's always weird that your superhero name is also your first name because that's (laughs) that's not like a giveaway. It's like, hmm, Ray. I think I know a guy named Ray who looks very similar to you. Uh, but it's it's like you calling yourself the core. Uh, that shut up. You're not supposed to tell anybody about that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Never going to let you in the core cave now. So, uh, so the Ray has light powers. Basically, he yeah. manipulates light, can, I think, turn into light, uses it to fly, shoot beams, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's that, it, that sounds pretty cool. Um, and right now, with looking at this, the lineup, the next person is um, Vixen, the uh, uh, who it's. I want to say it's. There's only one Vixen, but I could be wrong because comics and there's always multiple. In the comics, there was one Vixen. In this season of Legends of Tomorrow, they're, they're introducing they another them. Vixen. Yeah. So they're not using the actress or the character even that was utilized in last season's guest spot on Arrow. Mm-hmm. It also had the the cartoon shorts on the CWC. Yeah. In but fact, like, so... if, you, if you look at this list as we go along, you'll find that all of these characters seem to have something to do with the CW shows, including I think the Ray has a cartoon coming out on CW Seed. Yeah, as they well. mentioned that that he has um that he has his um and like the ray ha- has started her own so he will be getting a cw season or a cw seed animated series um the next person is the adam and it's not the ray palmer adam it's the ryan uh choi adam yeah ryan choi this w- is go ahead yeah this is with him and then the last one is killer frost that they've announced this seems like this is 
DC's answer to the all new, all different Avengers. Maybe a little a bit. Lot, now, it's a lot now Ryan Choi, when they did the new 52, Ryan Choi's Adam was supposed to come along at some point to be a, a member of the Justice League when they went past the initial seven. But for some reason, it didn't happen. They introduced the female Adam counterpart that was part of Forever Evil, uh, who was came over from Earth 3 and was in a relationship with, I think, was it Deathstorm or Johnny Quick or one of those guys? Uh, so she basically, she was on the team for a little bit and then betrayed the whole team because she was from the alternate world where all the good guys were evil and all the yeah. evil guys were good. So we've been waiting for Ryan Choi to show up. Ryan Choi, before the New 52, had been the Adam for a while. Uh, I think Gail Simone wrote the series, and it was pretty good. And then DC unceremoniously had Deathstroke murder him and shove him in a little matchbox with the sword through his chest. Uh, for no reason. So they spent all this time establishing yeah. this character, making the new Adam, uh, going off the fact that he is a uh, Asian American to to give some sense of diversity, and then they just whoop right out the window with it, and and did it to make Destro seem cooler when it was completely unnecessary, and it was just kind of it was a shit move on their part. So they're bringing him back. His current book, he teams up with Ray Palmer. Uh, Ray Palmer is kind of like the uh, the mentor to him. In a lot of ways, they're doing the same thing with Jaime Reyes and the original, not the original, but the, the one that most people know, Blue Beetles of Ted Cord. So, Ted Cord. but if you look at this, again, Ryan Choi is wearing what is an armor version of Adam's costume, very similar to the TV show version, which is not anything yeah. that's been done in the comics before. The so I don't remember reading much on yet yeah, since the uh, DC Rebirth uh, number one with him. So is yeah, that coming up later? It, it's I think it's one of the titles that's supposed to be coming out still. I think it was yeah it was established in Rebirth one, number one, and he's going to be going to look for Ray Palmer and the other universes. Uh, the microverse or whatever, but it may lead into some of the things that's going on with how we're going to go spoilers here. How Tim Drake on, on, on. I got it. version I got it. of Robin. There we go. Spoilers. Uh, the Tim Drake that's version of Robin it. recently was just killed in one of the Batman books. But then we find out in that issue, which I think was classy, that he's not actually dead, that he's been captured by this Mr. Oz person. Uh, so there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that it, some people have assumed it introduces the Watchmen characters to this universe. It, it's suspected Which that we've had, this yeah. character is going to be looking for Ray Palmer, and in part of that is going to be the storyline that deals with these characters who are getting essentially pulled out of reality by this Mr. Oz. Yeah. And then, of I, course, I don't expect the Killer Frost in here to be the Earth 2 version of the character from the Flash show. I, I think that this is just Killer Frost proper. This is Yeah, this is Killer Frost proper. Uh, from what they said in here, she's just gotten off of, or she's just done her sentence and is ready to leave the Suicide Squad. She just has to get past Amanda Waller. Yeah, and really, I don't know why Amanda Waller would actually let her go, or why yeah. the Justice League would want somebody who's a known murderer to be on their team. Uh, but we're going to see, this is going to spin out of the events going on with the Suicide Squad Justice League crossover, and that's what's going to bring up this other team. So we'll have to see. But the last couple yeah. of years, there's been several tries at having a, a second Justice League book or a second Justice League team. There was Justice League Dark, which disappeared very quickly. Mm -hmm. There was Justice League of America that came out that had, uh, or was it was it Justice League of America or something else where it had Hawkman yes. and Animal Man and several uh, other ones, Star Girl. Uh, there. Uh, oh, that was Justice League United. It was going to be League Justice United. League Canada, right? But then they yeah. they changed the name. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. Really, when it comes to the Justice League, 
I don't know that they're ready to spread past the 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 seven major characters and and those characters even those kind of flip sometimes because which green green lantern do you have at that moment uh which speedster do you have if it's the flash or is it a different version of the flash or a uh, kid flash or something is it cyborg versus martian manhunter where classically it should be martian manhunter as part of the group so to do another book that features completely different characters is always kind of like well this is the second rate so this is not the main justice league so why do i care about them unless you're a big fan of one of these characters it's unlikely that you're going to be looking at this at the same level of a superman batman wonder woman flash aquaman green lantern team at the same time sometimes that means you can do more stuff with it Uh, i think that if you've got these characters you can say, oh, well, you know, four issues in and we wound up killing Killer Frost or we wind up maiming the Ray because we don't have an expectation. It's not like we're worried about the Ray in his own other four books like we are Superman or Batman. We can do things with them that we couldn't do with the other ones. We can explore a different relationship with them that we can with the others. It's it's almost a clean slate. And if you look at what Marvel's done with the Avengers, the Avengers team hasn't been like the headlining characters of Marvel for a long time. Or there's just so many characters and the team keeps breaking up and reforming or there's secret or disgusting Avengers okay. or bad guy Avengers or <laughs> likes it up the butt Avengers, whatever you, you, you <laughs> I, I think that in, in all cases, it's like they've just stretched what Avenger means so far out that it's lost all definition as long as they don't do that with justice league then i think that it stands that it could still be pretty good the other thing on this is that it's one guy who's sort of the lead writer for it steve orlando he's co-writing on some of the books with other people to to keep cohesion and to not get overwhelmed and ivan rice is obviously a very good artist uh taking the artwork on this if you go from the team of those creators then it should at least be interesting. And if yeah. it's going to be an every two weeks book, once it grabs your attention, if it just keeps it long enough that you don't forget in that second week, then it, it might do okay. And this is one that, I, this is exactly what I was going to point out because um, for the new 52, he wrote uh, Midnighter. He did. Which was, he did. Yeah, which was very well received. Uh, yeah, was amazingly, really because a lot of people... It w- you would think would have a problem with the fact that Midnighter is openly gay, but it was just such a badass book that I think people mm-hmm. either one didn't care, which is great, or two just overlooked that because he was a badass and they're just like, I just want to see him kick butt and sometimes yeah. stare at Dick Grayson's ass. Yeah, he also wrote the Justice League Dark Side War Shazam number one, but then he is also right now currently writing Supergirl number one for or Supergirl for Rebirth. Yeah, which is super cool. I'm think enjoying it's that. Doing... Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying that that uh, story right there that they got going on. Very similar to the TV show, but different in enough ways to where people aren't going to be like, "Oh, they're just ripping off the TV show," sort of thing. Yeah. Um, on to the next story, and this is the story that. Um, much like it was announced last week that Adventure Time will end and regular show will end, Archer is going to be ending after 10 seasons. So we got like three years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which I don't know how I feel about the, them announcing it now. Because it's like, well, we got we got three years here, people. But it's it's nice because it lets everybody who's working on the show know that they're working towards something uh, also when yeah. their contracts are up. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to be out of work in three years. If anybody wants to hire me, you know, start making offers today. Oh, you mean, you mean uh, Chris Parnell, who is doing um, the progressive box commercials? I, I didn't Aisha really mean the voice talent necessarily because I think <laughs> they're all going to be OK. Uh, yeah. I meant maybe some of the animators and some of the storyboard artists and the people who don't automatically go from job to job as quickly. Uh, because they're not as well known in the public eye, but when somebody says, "Hey, all the the team from Archer is gonna 
be out of work soon, maybe we have a project where we can kind of steal them up uh, because we know that they do great work and yeah. we can we can get them ready for this uh, as they're going on. Not like poach, but to say, hey, if you're going to be free, come work for us. Yeah, and then maybe he, we don't have to keep not paying animators for Seth Rogen movies. Yeah, but the 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 thing that I like here, and the, which is the key, and this is also um, after Archer won its first Emmy for Outstanding Animated, animated Series, but it doesn't sound like this is FX canceling it. This is Adam Reed saying, I have a distinct endpoint. So it is going to be done at 10 seasons. Actually, it sounded like within here, within the interview that it could have been done. Um, Like the plan was eight, nine and, and 10 seasons, but they would have been shorter seasons. Like, you know, almost, almost to the, let's do it like British style where, oh, there's six episodes in a season. But it sounds like we might be getting more because of the, like he had a brain explosion. He, he had, yeah. you know, and so he's gotten all these things, which are like, sweet, let's get more Archer so we can all enjoy our danger zone and phrasing references. <laughs> to, and, and that might be the other thing too, is you get to a certain point where if it's all references like that, that you go, okay, we should probably, we should probably start to, to, bring this down uh start dimming the lights a little bit because maybe we're starting to parody ourselves more than we are telling good stories uh which is not i'm Wait, saying you, what you, they you, did you, you, yeah you're, you're talking about a show that was named isis before the terror group isis well i just it, know that the season where they closed up isis and it was more like miami archer, archer vice yeah archer yeah vice. That, that was uh that was not the best season uh that kind of got me like i had just recently been starting to tune in and that season got me to tune out and i i i don't think that was the same for everybody but yeah i we found out this week that both adventure time and regular show are also finishing off their runs uh they're planning on ducking out too so i i think that there's something to be said for going out <laughs> at a strong point versus you know just hanging around to keep hanging around as the show's quality keeps deteriorating as people like it's not must see TV anymore. And it just becomes like, Oh, well they've gotten some new writers and they're shit compared to the old ones who've gone on to invent new ideas. Uh, so fuck this season. I don't even care. Uh, yeah, I've definitely gotten like that on a lot of shows. So I'm going to hit two parts. Um, I'm, I was laughing at B be, with what he said of he, he didn't know hillary was a founding member of archer of or founder of Ar archer and, hillary clinton has been animating archer her entire adult yeah. life and then um brandon raymond say, saying that he didn't uh that he don't think he'd seen the entirety of chat he is except for now it's frozen my chrome so this is gonna be great um oh there we go and that's because beat is in our secret producer chat, AKA he's in the hangout. And so that's why I'm referencing the chat, but not you guys. I'm still, I'm and, still watching you guys. And of course but, there is yeah. also gncast.com slash sign up where you can join the other secret super chat of uh, our Slack channel of the Slack. <laughs> yes. Which um, I think is the only thing I so don't have open third... on my screen right now. I have it open on my screen. It's just behind a window. And then I also have our IRC chat room. Oh, that son of I a can bitch. go to as well. <laughs> Not enough people want to talk to us for that to even be a thing. Oh, no, I, I know. It's just. But we do appreciate the it's, ones who are I'm here. the only one in there. It's yeah. me and Suggestion Bot. That's it. And Suggestion Bot doesn't talk back. <laughs> suggestion Bot is like, I suggest you fuck right off. Yeah. So, story number three. <laughs> Uh, story number three is actually one that I love because I love this movie. Um, and it's it's just great to see that there's such, out of a simple mockumentary, um, we are getting so much stuff out of it. Um, oh, the movie I'm talking about is What We Do in the Shadows. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. Huh? Yeah, the movie is What We're Doing, What We Do in the Shadows. It is uh, directed by Taika Waititi, 
who is the director of the hunt for wilder people which i want to see and uh thor the dark or no thor ragnarok which i really want to see and uh also and it was also the he wrote it with jermaine clement and also they were both they both starred in it but you see we already knew of the sequel called we're wolves um which was about the werewolves in uh, what we do in the shadows but now empire new or empire breaks the news on paranormal event response unit um which is a new television series that will focus on the original films, easily manipulated police officers, Mike and Karen. And it will follow the, the duo as they try to keep Wellington safe from spooky beasties. And it has been uh, commissioned for six 30 minute episodes and it will be hitting the New Zealand channel and TV NZ too. So I'm excited. I just want to know how I can watch this here in America. Or even uh, in Britain or Australia, where I can I v- where I can VPN over to it. Yeah, I mean, isn't that always the case though? Is like, oh, this thing's coming out somewhere else, and I'm going to want to see it. You always find a way to see it. It's it's not like yes. they're they're really cock blocking you with your your internet viewing of these shows or movies. They it constantly it's seems to in pop New up. Zealand. All the their internet is run by sheep. Oh, okay, but New I mean, Zealand literally. has never sent shows over to America like Xena or. Hercules, or any number of movies that Sam Raimi has done, or Deathgasm, which is bad as shit. It was so fucking cool. Uh, I, I, I think. Oh, bad at, uh, okay. I think you'll you'll see it. I think it'll happen. I have faith. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just I, yeah, I do have faith that I will see it. But I, I love this. I love the fact that we're getting so much stuff out of this. Even when I'm, I honestly think this is the the big rise for Taika Waititi doing more big budget films. So, it, so to see, I don't know how involved he's going to be with the uh, the paranormal event response unit, but at the same time, I I'm excited to see to see this and then the werewolves and see where else they can go with this with this world that they have here. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited because there's something great about that moment when you get what is essentially a, a small or indie filmmaker and they just sort of start to break over to the, the bigger budget films and, and the more mainstream stuff. So they still have that, that ideal of, of what they want to do and being able to control a movie to tell a good story and and they haven't been totally jaded, but here's your billion dollar blockbuster check that you have to get. And it's like, OK, well, yeah, <laughs> but I still to me, it's still about the characters. It's still about the the individual um, plot and 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 having something coherent and enjoyable for people to watch, not just the same exploding cars six times over using the same footage over and over and over again. I think we know or who we're talking about. Scream. That, that is obviously. Martin Scorsese. Uh, so I, I think that it's it's <laughs> fun, and it's it's it was certainly a interesting world to to see happen in what we do in the shadows. To to have these characters get to kind of bounce out. He is being listed as a writer on the series, so yeah, he'll have some hand in it. But he did the Team Thor short. Yeah. You know, and I didn't even realize <laughs> the connection at that point in time. But when you watch the Team Thor short, it feels very much reminiscent of what we had already seen mm-hmm. from this. So, yeah, it, good on him. Good on him that he's he's. How did Ricky Rackman put it? Keep one foot in the gutter, one fist in the gold, and I think that that's where he's at right now. Yeah. Um. So that is it for the news. 